Hello, everybody, and welcome to God Talk on KITV. I'm John Christopher Sutton. And I'm Carol Ann. And today on the program, we're talking about praising God for who He is. Amen. Not just for what we can get, Chris. That's right. Not just for what He can do for us, but mm -hmm. when we're in a dark place, to praise Him then is what really counts. Amen. That is so true. Well, one of the things that we do as Christians is, is praise God for who he is and for what he has done for us. Yes. We give him thanks and we honor him with our voice and our deeds of good work. Yes. But we also do all of it in his name. Anytime we do any good deeds, it's always in the name of Jesus. We to, never claim anything for ourselves. That's right. To glorify him. Mm-hmm. And, and praise is very important, too, with your walk and your relationship with God. Now, as Christians, we're to set aside time to praise and worship and talk to God and allow God to talk to us. That's right. That's right. So we should give thanks to God in all things. If we are following God's rule and living within his ways, he shall give us all we need and want, as long as it lines up with his will That's for right. our lives. That's right. And Carol, we go a little deeper with this, with the first look at our Bible readings, and that is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In everything, Chris, if yes. you were suffering with a disease, mm -hmm. how hard would it be to give thanks at that point? Right. It, it would really be hard, and I believe God brings us through some of those places to test our love. Are we willing to even die for him? I mean, we will, probably won't have to do that, mm -hmm. but uh, some people have had to do that, and I wonder how could they hold on to their faith. But I also know that when God gives us something that's very difficult to praise him in, he also gives us the power, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the peace to sustain us in that trial, Yes. So that we can praise him. As long as we don't say, oh, the heck with that, and turn our, <laughs> our, ourselves away. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing we have to watch. Right. Praising God is part of being a Christian. And it's something that we learn to do. We do it and we practice it, but then it gets to be a part of our life. That's so right. we continue to do it and it's just like you know, brushing your teeth. It's just something we do in our life on a daily basis. Let's go a little deeper with this, Carol. Let's go to the book of Psalms next, chapter 103, verses 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Now we should be thanking God, you know, over the smallest thing. Be thankful in everything. That is pleasing to God and it'll make us feel better. And on verse, uh, the next verse, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. I'd like to talk about that sometime. Mm -hmm. Who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So we have to remember too, what we've been forgiven of, um, all of our sin is gone. He heals all of our diseases. Now, I still wrestle a bit with that, but I'm gaining ground on that. Mm -hmm. um, we've had so many experiences, and uh, we claim our healing as though it's already there. We don't wait for it. We're taking it now. Mm -hmm. And then our bodies start to line up with that, and, and you've kind of taught me that. Well, I, I encouraged you to start to speak life, and you're mm -hmm. speaking life, and I'm watching you be healed. People are asking me, what does Chris say? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's been very helpful. Yeah. He redeems our life from destruction. I, I would say definitely I was redeemed from destruction. You definitely were. Yes. When we both come to God, we were delivered from destruction and who crowned you with loving kindness and tender mercies and that I really notice with God that he is so good so kind so loving to us all the time and he satisfies your mouth with good things God knows what we like 
And he it's just like we would want to give a gift to a daughter or a son, somebody that we love. And it's the same with God. He wants to give us something that he knows we would really treasure. Amen. Well, you know, this psalm expresses thanksgiving and praise to the Lord for the benefits and blessings he bestows on his believing covenant people. Amen. So you got to be a believer in order to make this work in your life. It's a totally changed mindset that you're receiving in the will, ways, words, and laws of God. Once you start speaking the Word of God into your life, and you see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit working in your life, you'll see what we mean mm -hmm. by the blessings and miracles yes. that can happen, and the healings that can happen in your life, or even the people around your life yes. will start feeling that healing that's coming through your good words, your godly words well, of power. They'll be jealous of it. They'll mm. want it for themselves. Who yeah. wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Yeah. yeah. And we've got to remember to give the credit and the glory to God because uh, he's never for going to forget us and we should never forget God's goodness to us. And let's continue on in the Bible. We go to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 12 through 14. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses, and dwell in them. And when your hands, or when your herds, and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Well, Chris, I know why God makes valleys, and I know why he makes mountains. Mm -hmm. He wants to see if we'll be faithful on that mountain and will we be faithful in that valley. Because yeah. it's easy to be faithful when you're on the mountain, when everything's going your way. But when you're in the depths of despair, God is with you, but he's testing our love mm -hmm. to see are we going to honor him when everything is going wrong and it's a difficult time. We have to remember that. And... Uh, God does give us great and awesome things, and we can get our, our eyes on it and forget about God. Mm -hmm. it, it's easily done, especially in a new Christian. I would say it, it can be easily done without proper teaching and helping that person along. And uh, I, I like to think that I keep my mind pretty much on the Lord, and, uh, but I've known him for a very long time. And I don't You've practiced a lot. I've practiced a lot. You mm -hmm. got it. <laughs> yeah. And that's what it takes. It takes practice. Yes. yes. You get to the point of, you know, uh, studying the Word daily, getting the Word soaked in your mind and, and your heart, and then you start speaking that Word. So you're, you're gaining knowledge, and in that knowledge you gain belief because you believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross. You believe in God's Word. And that knowledge and belief turns into faith, and that faith turns into power. God's power in you. We just got to keep our eyes on the Lord. Like the one thing I find is that things can't control us. Mm -hmm. Because if they do, then our hearts and our mind are set on them and not on Christ. And that's where we can run into difficulty. And, and God wants to be number one in everything we do. There's no exception here. Right. And uh, so we need to be thankful for everything that comes our way, everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, just honor God, praise Him, thank Him for everything. And again, when we do this, we honor and praise Him and we give God the glory. When we're yes. out in the world and we're preaching the gospel in any method that you have to preach it, there are several methods to do that. But we always give the glory and the honor to God. That's right. In other words, in, in the ministry of healing, people can go out and, and ministry healing to other people in God's power. But if you're doing that, never say, look who I healed or I healed this person today. Mm -hmm. Always give the glory and honor to God. You didn't yes. heal that person. God healed that person through you. He's using you as the instrument of healing, but it's God that gets the glory. This is why God can't just give us whatever we want, whenever we want it, is mm -hmm. because we'll lose sight of Him and have our eyes on what we've 
desired. Right. And we have to remember too, when we're blessed, that it's God that sent the blessing. And that's where we have to be careful. And remember too, that before, before we found the Lord, we were in the flesh, we were thinking in the flesh, in our carnal mind, and we were thinking about what we wanted, you know, and how we wanted to go about it. We were doing things our way, but now things have changed because we're now following God's way, God's word, God's laws. We do things God's way. We speak God's language, God's words, and we walk in God's power. Amen. So we're doing what God wants us to do for our lives. We're following his instruction. That's right. He tells us where to go, what to do, what to say, and what not to say. He tells us which direction to turn. That's right. And when we follow his direction, he always brings us to the right place. And that, of course, is a place of peace, joy, and prosperity. But you have to follow God's ways. You have to follow his word and his laws. You have to walk with God right. in power and in his will for your life. Yes. Going back to the Bible again, Carol, Second Chronicles chapter 32 and 25. But Hezekiah did not repay according to the favor shown him. For his heart was lifted up, therefore wrath was looming over him and over Judah and Jerusalem. Mm. God wants all of our attention. Yes. And when I read the Old Testament, and I think how hurt God must have been, because people constantly turned away. God blessed them, and they complained, and God blessed them, and they turned away and served other gods. It must mm -hmm. have been really heartbreaking when you think about it. And, and it was like he was pouring out his heart to the prophets. I guess perhaps the ones that wrote the words. I don't know. But um, God's heart must be broken when people leave. Just like a son or a daughter leaving us. It would break our hearts if they left for the wrong reasons. They wanted to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have to keep our eyes on the Lord all the time. Amen. Amen. we got to give thanks for the blessings that are showered on us through the Holy Spirit. So we always give thanks and honor to God. Let's go and take a deeper look at this as we go to the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 38 and 39. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Amen. So all we have to do is repent to God. Now, there might be several Christians watching right now who have fallen, and we all fall. We're still just yes. human, you know. We're in the flesh still, so we're going to fall. But you got to know that no matter how far you've fallen, you can brush yourself off and get back up again. Just ask for God's forgiveness and for his guidance and strength. And he will once again be there lifting you up, showing you which way to go. And each time we fall, we get a little stronger. That's right. Because when we fall and go back to God, God is going to, to forgive us totally, shower us with love, and help us through the hard time. That's so right. we can always right. count on God. Amen. Let's continue on with this as we dive back into the Bible again, this time in the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Well, that mm. is the Holy Spirit. That's right. He said when he was to leave earth, he had to go to be with the Father that the Holy Spirit would come and live within us. And that's the difference. I know a lot of people, Chris, that really believe that they're Christians. Mm -hmm. But if you said, well, does the Holy Spirit live within you? They probably wouldn't know. Right. I met someone just recently, and, and they seem to know about God, and, oh, yes, I love the Lord. But later on, I could see, I don't think he's on the right road. 
-hmm. And we have to be careful because when we either know him or we don't, he either lives within us or he doesn't. Right. And uh, that's where I think the rubber meets the road there. Does he live within you? Have you asked him into your heart forever? Mm -hmm. And if he isn't in your heart, then where are you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we have to have him in our hearts. We have to have Holy Spirit power dwelling and thriving within us so we can walk with God in power. We need the power to do the will of God in our lives. Absolutely. We can't do the work of Absolutely. God. Absolutely. Yeah, without the he power. He helps us through the difficult times. Um, he gives us a way out of difficult times. He, he blesses us. He does so much for us, so much for me personally, that I, I can't be without him for even a moment. Amen. And when we do good deeds, we got to remember to do it in Christ's name. Amen. Always. Yeah. Not your own name, not somebody else's, but just Jesus. We do it in the name of Jesus. No matter what we do with our gifts that God has given us, never claim it as your own. That's right. Never say, I did this or I did that. It's always, God did this. Gee, it's in the name of Jesus that this is being done. It makes Amen. me think of a scripture, um, be anxious for nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, but by prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving. And that's what this is kind of about, is about being thankful for everything that God gives us. But with thanksgiving. And you know, I used to rhyme that verse off, and the peace of God will fill your hearts. And, but I forgot about the part that said, with thanksgiving. So every time we come to God, we should come with that word, thanksgiving. It's, like, it's like the password to get in to God, mm -hmm. is... Be thankful. Well, let's take a little deeper look at this by going to the book of Colossians and chapter 3 and verse 17. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. So whatever we do or say must be done in God's glory. Amen. Name, yes. Let's take a deeper look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And in the name of Jesus. Amen. And, and even in everyday life, even mm -hmm. just doing some housework, everything we do, we should do it well, do it uh, to the best of our ability, and do it to honor God. Right. And when we honor God by doing these miracles that God's power that's in us allows us to do, and then we give the credit to God, well, that's, that's the beautiful thing about mm -hmm. it. We're being blessed by God to be able to do these things, but we're blessing God by doing them when we honor Him in doing it with His name. Amen. Yes. Yes. So we give God the glory. It must be done in the name of Jesus, and that's where the power lies. Yes. There's power in his word, but there's also power in his name. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, when, when we're casting he, uh, out demons in people, or when we're healing people, which can still be done today Absolutely. with the power of God, we don't say, I'm casting this demon out in the name of Chris or Carol. We say, right. in the name of Jesus. We're casting you out. That's right. Amen. And that's the way it's supposed to be done. And that's where the power lies. The key to the power of the Holy Spirit that works within you is in the Word of God and the name of Jesus. Let's take a closer look at that by going to the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 13. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the sun. I mean, that's quite a statement. And whatever mm -hmm. you ask. Yes. But when you really know his heart, you're going to ask what you know he wants you to have. You're not right. going to want the worldly ways anymore. I mm -hmm. have no trouble asking for many things from God because my heart and his are kind of like one, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking to him to show me, Lord, what do you want? And then I'll pray, and, and if I think I know what he wants, that'll be what I'm praying for. Because we become one. We're, we're on the same road. We're not on the road 
of the world anymore. We're on God's road. And uh, he says, I'm going to do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And mm -hmm. there's another verse that said, if, if, my, if, I, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you desire and it will be given unto you. As but long you as see, it lines up with the word of God. <laughs> but, but there's the big if part. Right. If mm -hmm. you abide in me and if my words, God's words, abide in us, ask whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Because God looks at you and he sees... Oh, it reminds me of a little story I heard a long time ago, Chris. And it was about the daddy who worked away. And when he come home on the weekends, he said, I'm going to, he said to his little girl, I'm going to take you to Toys R Us and we're just going to buy whatever you want. And, and he was so glad to see her and he just loved her and wanted to pour out on her. Well, they went, got in the car and off they went. And, and what would you like, honey? And uh, she'd say, well, I don't know, daddy. And, well, would you like this? Would you like that? No, Daddy, all I want is just to be with you. And that's, that's the mm -hmm. difference right there. Mm -hmm. Are we asking all of our wants, or do we just love being with God? Because, you know, God does love to give us gifts, don't get me wrong. But uh, we should be enjoying Him up here, and everything else is down here. Amen. Well, there's three questions that we should ask before doing anything. Number one, is it a Christ-like action? Are we doing something that will benefit us and the body of Christ yes. and please God? Let's take a closer look at that. First John chapter 2 and verse 6. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Mm -hmm. so, so, in <laughs> other words... If we're going to abide in Christ, we have to be as like-minded as Christ. That's where the total mindset change comes in, into the will, ways, words, and laws of God. Like, are we thinking, what can we do for our neighbor? What can we do to help somebody? Right. Are we walking as Jesus walked? Are mm -hmm. we going to the nursing home and visiting some older relatives that surely need some company? Right. You know, are we doing what Jesus would have done if he was here? Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, what are we doing for the body of Christ? Mm -hmm. What are we doing as a Christian for others? That's the question we got to ask. Here's another question. Will it weaken my desire for spiritual things like God's word and prayer? So we've got to watch out what we're doing. It doesn't interfere with our life in Christ. Let's take a closer look at that. We go to Luke chapter 8 and verse 14. Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they had heard, go out and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. Hmm. So that kind of says a lot, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We get our eyes off of God and onto the new toy or the new mm -hmm. thing that we want to mm -hmm. do or become. But right. if it isn't God leading us, Personally, I don't want it anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. I right. have to have, I have to be in agreement with God. Right. And uh, I ask him every day, Lord, open and close the doors for me. Like if I'm going to purchase something, do something, I've got to have his approval first because it will turn out. Even though there might be obstacles, in the end, mm -hmm. we win. Yeah. Always. But if we go and do our own thing, is there plan B? <laughs> Does God? I, I like so. Plan A, but mm. God, I, I think. Okay, God, I forgot to acknowledge you in that. And is there a Plan B to get me out of this mess that I've created? Right, right. Well, we've got to put God as number one, the number one spot in our lives. Doing that ensures us that God is going to put us in the number one spot That's in right. His life. That's right. So we become like-minded as Christ. We start thinking, speaking, acting like Christ in our lives, and we start walking in uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, operating in that power daily to do the work that God has assigned us to do. That is walking as a functioning Christian. Here's another question. Will it weaken or hinder my witness for Christ? In other words, we got to watch what we do that, 
everything we do is pleasing to Christ and it's not going to hinder our walk with him in any way. Let's look at that. Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 through 16. Um, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that you may see, they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. So we see here that doing things in and for the body of Christ must be done in the name of Jesus. That's why it's so important to know that what you're doing lines up with God's word. We don't want to do or say anything that God would not be pleased in hearing or seeing. And that's about all the time we have. Hey, thanks so much for joining us yes. here on Kingdom Television. Until the next time, this is John Christopher Sutton saying, God bless you, we love you, Jesus loves you, and remember, keep Jesus by your side. You couldn't have better company. Bye-bye for now.